Let's do the questions here for the week. For the week, for the week. Right, Brit- British lady listener responding to male Brit listener. Hey, Bill, cheerio. Um, I'm a longtime lady listener, and you are keeping me company in my kitchen office as I work from home through this pandemic. That's great. Oh, I'm Scottish. You prefer Bella Willem. Bella Willem, you prefer Bella Willem. Well, no, folks, the fucking podcast. I'm, I can't do a Scottish accent. Um, I'm Scottish, but I live in Wales. Um, I, live in, I lived in London for 15 years. Jesus Christ. I get around. Before moving here so my husband and I could actually afford to buy a house. I'm responding to the male Brit who emailed you about the proposed curfew for men, which was suggested after a young woman was snatched from the street and murdered by a serving London police officer. Wow. See that? America is an American story right there happening in London. American piece of shit in a lunch. See, it's not, it's not always us. All right, the background to this is before the cops had worked it worked out, it was one of their own officers. Oh, oh, before the cops had worked it out. Wait. Before the cops had worked out, it was one of their own officers who had kidnapped and murdered this girl. This is so fucking horrible. The Met, London police had advised that all women should stay at home to avoid the same thing happening to them. The female member of parliament who suggested the male curfew. Oh, because a guy did it to the woman. That's so fucking stupid. What do you think the fucking serial killer is going to be like? Well, I guess I'll st- I guess I got to stay home. I, I guess I got to start following rules now. Baroness Jones did so in protest and to provoke a response. She later said, I'm just trying to highlight the fact that when the police victim blame by asking women to stay at home, we don't react, but when I suggest it for men, everyone is up in arms. Um, they're not victim blaming. They're trying to fucking protect you because this is what this person is going after. <laughs> I swear to God, dude. I swear to God. The only thing that's important right now in life is that scientists said by 2050, the amount of plastic in the ocean is going to outweigh the amount of fish. I just watched this fucking thing where these fish are up at the top of the surface because there's no oxygen in the water and these whales have to create a new way of hunting because of all the plastic we're throwing in there. And everybody's going like, right, they're fucking victim blame. They're victim blame trying to save your fucking life. You know, if the cops could say, hey, can all psychopath women killing serial killers all stay home this evening? Then you could go out. Victim blame. Jesus fucking Christ. The world has gone fucking nuts. If somebody was out there killing redheads and the cops told me to stay home, I wouldn't be like, stop freckle blaming. I would fucking stay home. Or maybe, you know, start working with the cops and walk down the street with a revealing outfit and try to lure the guy out of the bushes. (laughs) Wearing my little wire. On my brazier. Uh, the listener who told you about the suggested male curfew sounds like a little like my husband, who responded by saying, Not all men do that, and a curfew for men criminalizes the good guys. I wholeheartedly agree that not even close to all men behave or act like that, but almost all women have been affected by male violence at some point point in their life uh you know and we've been all been affected by toxic women and psycho chicks too okay human beings are unbelievably flawed having said all this if the cops told me to stay home because there's some piece of shit out there kidnapping and fucking uh you know killing women i I would stay home because i get their thing where it's kind of like all right well this guy has this hunger he needs to feed he's gonna go out he's gonna go uh he's gonna go out no wait Wait, the cops didn't tell the guys. Oh, now I'm all confused. The lady said for the guys to stay home. I don't give a fuck. This is what I would do. If I was a man or a woman, whatever the cops are telling me to do, they're trying to catch the fucking guy. So I would listen to the cops and I'd stop making it about yourself, male or female. All right? Anyway, to give you an idea, just a few things that have happened to me are I was severely beaten up in the street by an ex-boyfriend. I took that fucker to court and he was convicted. Almost 20 years later, I still have nerve damage in my face from it. Jesus Christ. On a morning commute to work, I was struck in the nose in nose to tail London traffic. 
a suited and booted douchebag in the Mercedes next to me was wanking whilst looking me dead in the eye. I sat with my hand on the horn, shouting out the window and pointing until he put his shaky, his skanky dick away. Jesus Christ. What the fuck is going on in London? I was horribly and intimately groped by a man on the London tube. I was filming in Belgium. Oh, Jesus, at least you fucking finally left London. I work in uh, TV production, and some dickhead member of the public came out of nowhere and groped my tit before running away. I was wrapped up in a winter coat, so wasn't wearing anything that caused me to, quote, ask for it. This is horrible. Stating the obvious. Most recently, I was followed home in the dark by some angry crackhead guy as he was so messed up on whatever shit he'd taken, I could... I could thankfully run faster than him and got into my house before he reached my street and worked out where I lived. Every single female friend I have has similar to worse stories than mine. Worse stories than nerve damage 20 years later. Every single female friend you have. So whilst I agree that not all men behave like this, instead of pissing and moaning, it would be helpful for guys if guys got as angry when the authorities suggested us women should stay at home to avoid being raped and murdered. (laughs) On a lighter note, we're looking forward to when you're going to be back over. Yeah, I think both sexes need to just listen to the cop because I think you said it there. The authorities are trying to make sure you don't get raped and murdered. Just let the cops do their work. Everybody get out of their own ego and stop making this fucking Hatfields and McCoys. There's a bunch of great women and men out there that would like to see this guy get caught. And the people whose job it is to get him caught are the cops. So if they come up with a game plan, why don't you go with it? It's like when the doctors come up with a game plan to beat a virus. Why don't you go with it instead of trying to become your own fucking doctor? But whatever. What do I know? I'm just a fucking comedian. All right. Plowing ahead here. Um, all right. Men's curfew. Another one. Hello, Rusty Bill. Hello, Rusty Bill. Just addressing the email you received regarding a men's curfew. The suggestion was tongue in cheek. Oh, I didn't realize that. The narrative is women must not travel alone, but out at night after a certain time, dress appropriately, etc., to be safe. So in response, women are saying they are not the ones who should be changing their behavior as it's men who are more likely to be the cause of violent crime against both genders. Uh, That is, okay, the idea, that is so astoundingly fucking stupid because you're talking about someone who would rape, murder, and kidnap somebody as if they are a rational human being, as if the only reason that they're doing this, like they're trying to increase the odds of you not getting picked. That's all they're doing while they go after this guy and try and find him. That's all the fuck they're trying to do. They're trying to catch this guy. And everybody's like, well, how come you don't do that? I I, I give up. I give up with all of that shit. All right. Millennials. What's up, you old Gen X ginger balls. (laughs) Now what's up, old Gen X ginger balls. Um, I've heard you talk a a few times recently about enjoying these young crowds and how they're not getting offended as millennials millennials do. Figure I'd let you know that these young people at your show most likely are millennials. No, they're not. And I know the ages of millennials, so don't even start. The youngest millennials are 25. So unless you're performing to a bunch of 21 and 24-year-olds, you've got us, I say us, 27-year-olds. No, no, this was a super young fucking crowd. I understand you guys are also all the way up to almost 40 years old. I'm the one who's been saying how old fucking millennials are. Don't fucking preach this back to me. Okay, I'm telling you, there's been a shift. And I'll give credit to maybe the ass end of millennials. But that front end of millennials are fucking horrific. Fucking horrific. And I I performed in front of enough of them. But I understand that you're a millennial, so you have to defend your generation, which is why you called me Gen X, even though... I don't identify Gen X because Gen X is somehow tied into grunge and grunge killed, took all my music, all my fucking metal music off of the the MTV back when they played music, the countdown. All right. An ex Muslim problem. No, Jesus. Hello, Bill. Hello, Bill. Hello, Newman. Um, I watched every stand up you've done. You've had online and been a longtime fan. Well, thank you. Although I didn't pay attention to the podcast till you took mushrooms. (laughs) Okay. I'm a Kurdish man born in Musi, Iraq. I hope I said that right. I grew up, I grew up during the, the war and saw a lot of death 
I got used to death at the age of nine to 12. Is that the saddest fucking thing? That was his childhood because of these banker cunts and these oil companies. It's fucking ridiculous. Fucking ridiculous. It always comes down to those two fucking cunts. Energy and money. Comes down to those two fucking cunts, no matter where it is. No matter where it is. Um, Anyway, one of our neighbor uh, that was an officer died during the war. They brought his body in a truck wrapped up with a blanket that was exactly like mine. At night, I couldn't sleep and think about him and death. I was taught to never question God, but I was questioning God that night to the things that are happening. Yeah, that's a totally normal. When you see what human beings can do to other human beings, shit, if you see what animals do to some other animals, like why are there Komodo dragons? You know, I understand they got to kill to eat. Why can't they just kill them? They start eating them before they're even dead. I mean, it's just like fucking ridiculous. Um, It was the most terrifying time of my life because I thought God is going to kill me for thinking this way. Well, welcome to organized religion. But obviously nothing happened. I stopped questioning God or religion till ISIS came along. Uh, When Yazidis got attacked by... It says IS. I don't know if that's ISIS or what. In 2014, they got kicked out of their homes and, kid- and kidnapped their girls and women to be served as slaves to members to IS members. I went to Sinjar Mountain to help them while they were coming down from the mountain. An old woman run down to an officer, jumped on his feet, kissing and kowtowing, begging him to bring her granddaughter back from IS. That was the moment I lost my religion and the idea of God. I couldn't live there anymore, so I moved to Sweden. Jesus Christ, this is a fucking heavy email. My family doesn't know that I'm not a religious person anymore. If I did tell them, they would never talk to me, but it's fine for them not to know. That's the smartest thing to do. So my problem is that I've fallen in love with a Kurdish girl that is religious. I did tell her that I'm not religious because she deserves to know. She cried for two days and then told me she's okay with it. I guess she's hoping that I'll change my mind in the future, which I'm very sure that I won't. Every time I remind her that I'm not a religion, religious person, she just ignores it. Uh, I always thought that love is a silly thing that doesn't exist till I meet her, till I met her. Uh, we are engaged now. We've talked about kids recently. I told her that I do not want my kids to grow up with any religious ideas, but she thinks they'll be monsters if we did that. I'm okay with her being religious, but I'm definitely not okay with my kids growing up on those ideas. Love is strong, but not strong enough to choose your life partner. Uh, we've been, we've knowing each other for over three years now. And that's the end of the email. Yeah. You need to work that out before you marry her. Um, but you know, you're allowed to think what she, you think, and she's allowed to think what she thinks. You know, if she's, if it works for her, it works for her. And, but I definitely, I 100% see when I see what people do to other people. Um, yeah, I just don't. Like the the capability of fucking evil is just, I I don't get it. I don't get it. I think if there is a God that made us, he or she could have done a lot better fucking job. Um, All right, fat people bragging. Dear Billy Zigzag, I don't care who gets the vaccine before me because I'm not an at-risk person. I do, however, think it's fucking crazy that fat people are bragging about getting the vaccine first on social media. I keep seeing threads of people pictures of fat people throwing up peace signs like they won something these high-risk people were the excuse to shut down businesses for a year and they're the first ones to be able to go back and eat at a restaurant and dude you should be a comedian this is a killer bit and somehow someone will think i'm a dick for complaining how about a tad bit of shame for not taking care of yourself yeah and slowing down the herd i i agree i agree you should turn that into your first stand-up bit or just for the fuck of it, sign up for an open mic and just do that and get it off your chest. And it's, even if you bomb, there'll be one person laughing and then I'm telling you, it'll make your day. All right, cruising for a bruising. Dear Billy, the orange creamsicle. I know you're trying to trash me, but I kind of like that one. Yeah, they call him the creamsicle kid. <laughs> um, I am a 22-year-old. Uh, university graduate from Toronto, Canada. 
working on the weekend like usual. And I can I am currently working a job landscaping to make money until I start firefighter school this summer. Anyway, I have recently picked up a bad habit of boozing very consistently since the start of the pandemic. Yeah, a lot of people I think are drinking heavily. I'm bored, and what can I say? I like my beer. I am drinking anywhere between four and eight beers every other night, and sometimes more often than not. Uh, I think every other night is more often than not. Well, no, that's 50-50, right? No, I suck at math. I drink every night. Oh, and sometimes more often than not, I drink every night. I know you've been sober for a number of years now. Sort of. I was California sober, as Josh Adam Myers says. And basically, weed then kind of took over, you know, and I was having an edible like four or five times a fucking, you know, a week. And then I was just like, this is, I have a problem against. And I had to walk away from that. Um, So I've really just been sober since February 28th. So he says, I am thinking I should follow in your footsteps or at least drop down the number of days a week I'm drinking. I don't know about you, but I use booze to calm my anxiety and spice up my days so I don't spiral into a fit of depression. Hey, welcome to the club. Um, He goes, however, as we all know, too much booze can lead to bad decisions that make you feel like a piece of shit the next morning. And I absolutely hate that feeling. I have talked to a therapist before and it didn't do a whole lot for me. Anyway, I am just looking for some tips on how you got the booze out of your life because I don't want my future to go down the wrong path. Thanks a lot. I love the podcast. All the best to you, the lovely Neo and your wonderful kids. Cheers and go fuck yourself. Um, All right. Well, everybody's different. For me, um, I just was done with booze. And I had kids and I felt I had a, only a daughter at that point. I just didn't feel good about being drunk down, getting drunk downstairs while she was sleeping upstairs. Um, yeah, and then fucking, and then whenever I would have like an edible, I, you know, if I was high, I would just be like, she, and I'd be like, you know, she's sleeping, nothing's going to happen. I can do this, and it's just stupid. If something does happen, what the fuck? We have earthquakes out here. God knows what could happen. I'd be high as shit. It was stupid. So um, the big thing that's making you do it, that made me do it was this underlying depression and sadness from all the shit that made me want to be, you know, drove me into being a comedian. And I think at some point you kind of have to work that out. Uh, Maybe you had the wrong therapist. Maybe you weren't ready for therapy, but it's always good to talk to somebody about it. You know, talk to a therapist Said I tried therapy. It hasn't worked, you know, for me, but you know, I, I, I'm drinking too much and I think I'm drinking because to stay away from these depressive thoughts and that's not the right reason to drink. So um, I would just suggest being really open to either friends and family about it and try to get a new therapist if you can and just put it out there and tell people that you're drinking too much and you don't want to drink and you're drinking for the wrong reasons and you want to stop. And if you ask for help, people, you'll be surprised. People will, will really help you out. And, um, you know, I'll tell you, the great thing about not boozing is the next morning. You feel great. You don't have to apologize to anybody. And, you know, everything you said was what you meant, was, you know, was what you wanted to say, at least. Um, all right. Here we go. Last one here. I am a jealous girlfriend. Um, all right. Hey, Bill, I'm a 25-year-old woman with some abandonment slash daddy issues. I know this is who I am, but not necessarily the person I want to be. So, of course, I'm in therapy to work this stuff out. Well, I got to commend you for knowing all that about yourself at the young age of 25. You're way ahead of the game. Um, Unfortunately, my boyfriend is still sometimes subjected to my jealous nature. For example, the other day he invited me to come visit him at work. And when I showed up, I met his new co-worker who is very pretty. Uh, I should mention that I myself am beautiful, but even if I wasn't, I know my boyfriend loves me to the end of the earth and doesn't want to be with anybody else. That being said, I could still feel my Italian blood boil when I met this girl. I spent the rest of the day begging myself not to let my emotions get the best of me and say something to my boyfriend. My self-control lasted until the next morning. That's pretty good. When I finally brought it up, a short little spat ensued, but about 15 minutes later, we were both hugging and apologizing. Well, this seems, you know, this, don't beat yourself up after this. You know what your problem is and you're working your way through it. You're able to control it to the next morning. And even when it it finally leaked out, 15 minutes later, you, you know, you were apologizing 
he apologized, you know. I don't know why he apologized. You fucking started it. But, you know, that's how it works usually. <laughs> that's how the math is done. That's great, though. So anyways, he said, I told him that I understood he has no control over how attractive his coworkers are. I also know that it's normal to flirt a little bit outside of a relationship. I myself innocently flirt with others from time to time. So I'm being super hy- hypocritical by getting all butthurt at the thought of him doing it. I also acknowledge that every time I get jealous like this, it probably makes him feel more and more suffocated, which will probably hurt our relationship in the long term. Uh, he handled this interaction like a champ, forgave me for getting jealous, said it was no big deal, and made a joke about me being on my period. You guys sound like you got a cool relationship to me. Um, I know he's being genuine when he says it's okay, but I can't help but put myself in his shoes. I, which is, hey, that's something that's really difficult for people to do. That's called empathy. It's a tough thing for most human beings to do, putting themselves in somebody else's shoes. Uh, If I had a partner who acted the way I did, I would probably lose a little respect for them with every incident and know I would start feeling resentful and suffocated. My question is, do you have any advice about damage control? Is there anything I can do to get a little self-respect back and relieve any guilt he might have about being attracted to other people? Furthermore, do you have any advice on how I can calm the fuck down whenever I start overthinking and getting jealous? Thanks for your insightful comedy. P.S. Go Leafs. Oh, another person from Toronto working on the weekend like usual. Um, I think a lot of this is in your own head. I think if you, you, you had a little hissy fit and then 15 minutes you apologized and you, you're owning up to your behavior, I don't think, I think that he knows that this is something that you're working on. So as long as you own up to it, I don't think he loses respect for you. I mean, I'm sitting there thinking like all the stuff I was reading about you, I was thinking this woman's a keeper. You know, nobody's perfect. And you actually are looking at yourself. You're examining yourself. You're in therapy. You fuck up. You apologize. You feel bad. You put yourself in the other person's shoes. You can't ask any more of that from a person. So just keep working on yourself. And I would actually not be so hard on yourself. Unless you don't apologize, which you did. And if it's over 15 minutes later, then, you know, I don't know. If my wife flipped out and then 15 minutes later apologizes to me, it's fucking over. It's squashed. It's like when you fight and then you're silent for the whole fucking day and then you get a half-ass apology and then they do it 10 minutes later again, that's when resentment comes in. So I think, I think you're in the clear here. You're fine. Keep working on yourself. You're way ahead of the game. You're only 25 years old. You're a kid. So uh, you're going to be fine. That, that's what I say. All right? Okay. All right, everybody. That's the podcast. Um, I don't know what to tell you. I'm just looking around my fucking nice, clean office, and I'm loving life right now. I hope you guys are enjoying your life. All right? Owning up to what the fuck you're doing. Having empathy for other people. Not working for banks or oil companies. Helping out people less fortunate. Let's try to be better people, man. Um, All right, go fuck yourselves. (laughs) I'll talk to you. I'll check in on you on Thursday.